I think these third party Joy Cons legitimately just bricked my Switch. What is going on? Hi, I am really excited to make this video. These kinds of videos are some of my favorites to make, and I have lost count of how many I have made because I've also lost count of how many of these ridiculous Joy-Cons, add-ons, accessories, variations, third-party knockoffs that the Switch seems to have. I don't know who's out there asking for oval-shaped Joy-Cons, but apparently there was a market for them because Made in China made them. <laughs> I don't think that's the comp- Who is making these? Stop making these! <laughs> not only all of that, but this video is actually kind of cool, kind of special, because we not only have the world's smallest, tiniest Nintendo Switch controller, we also have the world's biggest, most ridiculous Nintendo Switch controller. There is a lot I have to get through in this video, <laughs> so I'm just going to shut up. And do it. I'm not the kind of guy to set like challenges, but 20,000 would be nice. Also, I'm not the kind of guy to set subscriber challenges, but a million subscribers would be nice. Whatever, let's just get started. I also, for no reason in particular, have three packs of Pokemon cards. I may have accidentally got into playing the Pokemon card game online. So throughout this video at random points, I might open a pack of Pokemon cards. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa. Tiny controller for a tiny man, am I right? <sighs> I'm 6'2". And why are you here? Are you, try, are you gonna try and sell me something like Raycon again? <laughs> Not like Raycon. So actually Raycon. Raycon, yeah. Okay. Raycon, the best in wireless earbud technology. They come in a range of fun patterns and colors. I got the blue ones. They're super comfortable and will fit into whatever weirdo hole in the side of your face you've got. You lazy son, did you just use the same clip from last time we did this sponsor? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what? Uh, no, 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 mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yes, you did. That's not even where you were standing, and you were wearing different clothes. Raycons started about half the price of other premium wireless earphones on the market. I've had their latest model, these E25s, for a week now, and it's by far the best ones yet. Yo, you just did it again! Look, this isn't as easy as you think, you know, having a burst in here every time with some new funny idea every time I want to do a sponsor. Can you just let me get away with this this one time, please? Can you be cool? Yeah, all right, fine. Just this one time. Assuming you let me get away with it as well. Sure. Wow, these are actually pretty cool. The case acts as a power bank. So when you're done listening to the Raycons, throw them back in the case and it will charge them back up. Now I'm really confused. <laughs> which me is me and which you is you. I know, me too. But you know what isn't confusing? That if uh, they click that link below, they'll get 15% off their order at Raycon? Yep. All right, well, cool. Now where's that leave you and me? Hey guys. Oh, there's another one! What's going on? I guess we'll start with these ridiculous oval shaped ones because as someone who has made a few videos like this already, I know that these are most likely not going to work automatically out of the box. They're probably not going to be like good Joy-Cons where when you plug them into the Switch, they just start working and connecting. You probably have to charge them up first and then find some ridiculous workaround to actually get them to work on the Switch. These do not feel how you would expect them to feel in your hands. They have massive indents on the back, which you would think are there for comfort, but they don't really fit into your hand in any kind of comfortable way. If anything, that groove ends up jabbing itself along the ridge where my fingers connect to the palm of my hand, and it makes it far more uncomfortable. Although, I will say, the other than that, these feel very nice. Like the buttons and the sticks and the D-pad, all of it feels pretty legit. Like it doesn't feel third party, it doesn't feel cheap at all. Yeah, everything about these actually feel really quality. These buttons at the top here, if you were gonna play a game sideways like this, they're actually raised up. Whereas on an actual Joy-Con, they're kind of like these tiny little flat things in these grooves and they're really hard to press. Whereas these ones are actually really easy to access. Honestly, other than that groove, these are very nice. <gasps> it synced automatically! You have no idea how exciting that is because that just does not happen with these third-party controllers. You know what? It is working right out of the box. I don't even have to charge them and I think it looks really cool. This actually looks like a thing. Like this actually looks like 
if Nintendo released Joy-Cons like this originally, I don't think anyone would have been... Like, you know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. When you're holding one Joy-Con, that groove is super uncomfortable. I can't tell you how uncomfortable it is. You just need to buy them yourself and experience it. But when you actually click them in and you're holding the Switch like this, they've become comfortable. The only thing that's gonna make these Joy-Cons have a negative is if this doesn't charge them and you have to charge them separately. It's charging them! I'm actually gonna rank all of these controllers as I go along, and I'm gonna go ahead and rank these bad boys at a, at a number one spot right now. I'm gonna put them here at number one because uh, they are number one. Let's do this one. I see this one in GameStop every time I go in and I've never actually bothered to buy it because it honestly just looks like a pro controller with a light inside. But the curiosity got the better of me and I finally decided to pick it up for two reasons. One, it's cheaper than a pro controller. So I want to know if it's as comfortable or more comfortable. And two, they don't look cool to me. And I've always wondered, is it like a thing where the camera can't really capture it? And does it actually look much better in person? I am so sick of all these third-party controllers and accessories not utilizing USB-C. Companies, please listen to me. But you guys and Afterglow, which is made by PDP and they make a lot of... Listen, the Switch only uses USB-C for things. It's not, it's not brain surgery. It's not rocket science. You dumb bums. Yeah, you stupid smelly faces. You fuck. <laughs> it honestly does look really cool. All right, we are on and the lights are on and they are just as underwhelming <laughs> as they've always looked to me. I mean, a little better, right? It's a little cooler. Right into the camera lens. I don't, does that, how does that look? Here's one thing that PDP controllers do have is it has these back buttons and you can program left and right to be anything you want. That's a huge advantage. One is A, the other one is whatever I feel like at the time, but having something back here like A, it means that I can like hold down a run button in Witcher 3 and I don't have to take my thumb off this toggle at any point. It's actually really handy. So it has three color settings, which is strange. It has blue, green, and then cycle between all. And I, I think that's weird because when it cycles, you get this nice red, this nice yellow, a cyan, or a, is that how you say that word? The cyan blue. It's a comfortable controller. Having the back buttons are really nice, but you can also get those on any of these PDP controllers, not just the one that lights up. So all in all, I think the lights are underwhelming but it is a very stylish and, and cool looking controller. One man's opinion, let's get these studio lights back on. <laughs> a little secret reason why I'm doing this on top of the fact that I have got into the trading card game is that my friend Jordan is uh, a massive Pokemon fan, has a Pokemon channel where he unboxes these things. Oh, I'd be lying if I said he wasn't part of the reason I started looking at Pokemon cards. I mostly wanted this code. I know people give away these codes, but I actually bought the pack for the code because I'm playing the game online. I don't actually care about the physical. I bought it for the digital. Does that make sense? <gasps> Ooh, a oh, he's so shiny. Ooh, that's cool. Uh, I don't know. I don't... <gasps> Is that good, Jordan? Jordan, is that good? I don't know, the card looks cool. It's time to wait even longer for the smallest Switch controller. So these joy pads, not joy cons, these ones are essentially just supposed to be straight up joy con replacements, uh, a cheaper variable, uh, if you will. Uh, however, I still paid like 50 for them. Oivo's version of just regular joy con, a cheaper version of joy con. Nope. <laughs> right out the box, I can tell you these thumbsticks feel horrible. The buttons are perfectly fine. However, you'll notice they're really fat buttons and close together. I have fat thumbs, so that's not good. I don't like that. Let's see if they automatically sync. There's no, there's no charge point on them, so they have to. They have to automatically sync. They automatically need an update, but that's fine. To the naked eye, to someone, you know, your old Mima out there, if you said, hey, Mima, play, spot the difference. Can you notice a difference between these two? Probably wouldn't. I mean, they do look pretty much the same. I'm gonna assume, just like all these third-party Joy-Cons, the first place they end up cutting cost is the the, the Amiibo reader, the, the QR scanner, whatever the heck it's called is gone. I don't uh, know. This is now. Links to all this stuff below, by the way, and they are Amazon links that will help directly support the channel if you decide to buy any of this stuff, but uh, I will say that 
Oh no. It's been updating for like 20 minutes since I plugged these Joy-Cons in and it asked me not to touch the Joy-Cons and then I immediately disconnected them. And now it's frozen on this screen. I might have to restart my Switch. Oh, I can't. Sleep mode is grayed out. I think these Joy-Cons bricked my Switch. God. <laughs> No, no, I don't, this is my new one. Technical difficulties, guys. Um, My heart has dropped into my stomach and I feel a little sick. So I am going to be right back. <laughs> I'm a failure. <laughs> what we have here is the smallest, the teensy tiniest, the itsy bitsiest, the littlest whittlest. Okay, I'm gonna stop. Nintendo Switch controller. It is ridiculously small. It is adorably small. It is so easy to take this controller anywhere you go just in case someone else wants to play two players with you, whether it's your Switch Lite or your regular Switch. If you try playing games with this for more than an hour or so, you're gonna start getting crampy thumbs, but for a quick couple of sessions of Smash Bros or Mario Kart, you could definitely get by with this. But as far as a teensy tiny itsy bitsy little controller goes, it feels really quality. The D-pad is nice, the buttons are nice, the little L and R have a really nice click and give to them. I was playing Portal Knights last night with Kim, so I'm just gonna load that back up. Actually, will I even be able to? Because it doesn't have a toggle. Oh wow, okay, so it is working. I wasn't sure if it would work with the D-pad. It's defaulting to what the toggle would do. So if there are games that relies on you needing to use um, the toggle and the D-pad, this isn't gonna work. The game at least, or the Switch recognizes that all I have is a D-pad and it makes it the priority for moving around, which is really nice. I can't think of if there's any downside to using this controller for a game like this. Oh, I found it. I found the downside. Okay, so in this sub menu, I need ZR and ZL to go across if I wanna craft any of this. Oh, I can touch it. But if I was playing docked, I wouldn't be able to access any of these menus. It's really neat in concept. It's really adorable. And it's hard to talk about it without making a stupid baby with <laughs> my voice. But uh, yeah, definitely not practical. I had no idea what this mini pocket was for and it finally has a purpose. So there's that. <laughs> All right, next Pokemon card time. All right, let's, uh, I don't know what the little thing is here. So I'm gonna take two back there, mix them up. Who even knows? Oh, shiny Sobble. That was my actual starter in Sword and Shield. And then a Warbuffet. Oh, oh, how boring. Maybe it's good. I don't know. This actually, I may have just bought this for tax purposes and putting it in the video so I can claim it on tax because I really wanted this. They've even used USB-C for their controller because they're smart. Because they're smart big brains and they're not dummy dum-dums. This is obviously a Super Nintendo controller. You can use it for your Super Nintendo online games, but they've also added toggles. So you can actually just straight up use this on your Switch for any game. It just is a controller. You can use it for Breath of the Wild. You can use it for anything. This thing is probably twice, maybe even three times heavier than a, a SNES controller, which is how you know it's quality. Unless I just stuffed a bunch of rocks in there. Oh, they stuffed a bunch of rocks in there. <laughs> no, they Okay, here we go. We're back in, uh, back in Portal Knights again, just because it's the game I had in my Switch and I'm really lazy. As expected, now we actually have full motion over everything. Now I have my sticks back, which feel really nice. These sticks actually have a much nicer feel and give to them than even the regular Joy-Con. And honestly, I actually think I like these sticks more than a Pro Controller stick. Like it's just got really nice give on them. We have both our back buttons now, whereas in the other game we didn't. And now I think about it, you actually need R2 to even attack in this game. So I couldn't even attack with the little mini controller. Even these buttons, the X, Y, B and A feel super nostalgic, but awesome at the same time. This is a quality controller. Um, I wouldn't even say it's like a gimmick. It's just, if this looks nice to you, if it's something you might like to have, if you are hardcore retro and you only like controllers like this and you're sick of all the everything i don't know this could be perfect for you but it's nice and it is absolutely worth every penny oh my gosh these are the most ridiculous ridiculous looking control i can't even say i can't even say the word ridiculous because of how ridiculous these controllers look smash like on this video for my switch breaking can we make it thirty thousand instead of twenty thousand for my switch breaking oh my gosh what is in my hand right now which side is up which side is down i don't know what's going on i don't know what i'm looking at 
I think it's like this. Whoa. Oh my gosh. They're so slimy. The plastic is like slippery. I can't really explain it. It's not wet. It's not actually like covered in slime, but the plastic is so glossy, I guess, that my hand's just slipping down it. Like these slip straight out of my hand unless I put like a big grip on it. These protruding, sticking out freaking buttons that look like if I hooked up some cables to one end and my car battery to the other, these might give me a jump start if my car battery ever dies. Turbo. There's a turbo button. Turbo function. Programmable turbo for any face or shoulder buttons. That's kind of cool. I keep expecting the A button to be about here, but it's actually all the way over here. Comfortably to use the sticks, I'm holding my hand here. Like, this is what feels natural. This is a normal, natural position for my thumbs to be in. The back button is a little bit of a stub. It doesn't come around and wrap around the corner like on a Joy-Con. I have to stretch my hand out wide and kind of hold it in like a claw position. Terrible. These are absolutely, god-awfully, disgustingly, waste of moneyingly terrible. These are officially the worst Joy-Con knockoff controllers I have ever experienced. Terrible knockoff Joy-Cons. So stay away from these. Consider buying these if they look like something you might like. And I'm very whatever on this. Links to everything below, but make some space, ladies and gentlemen. Clear some room for a huge box because it's finally the time you've been waiting for. And this has been in my house since before I left for Australia. I am so excited. Also, I do have to give a shout out to Bob Wolf um, because I found this thanks to his channel. Uh, so go check him out. Oh my gosh. You know, when I was a kid, I actually wanted one of these so bad. Not this one, because when I was a kid, this exact one didn't exist. But a steering wheel to play games with, I thought it was just the coolest thing in the world. Oh my gosh, it looks so cool. Ah, oh, it's got little back triggers. What are those for? Changing gears? Ah! To play this, I'm gonna have to take it downstairs and set it up at my computer and have Kim help me uh, film it. So it didn't take too long to set up. I will say that because my desk has this stupid drawer here, I couldn't really get in there right. And it's, it's a little temperamental. I'm sure it's a lot more solid when you don't um, be dumb. Uh, and all I did was I hit L and R and it, it worked. So I was like, okay, stop. I gotta go get the camera, so I haven't actually tried it yet. But this is just kind of one of them things that were on my bucket list when I was a kid. I wanted one of these steering wheels with the pedals. I was always jealous of my friends that had them. Alright, let's go. Oh, okay. This is gonna be really difficult. So the back pedals do the little bunny hop thing, and I guess I'll fight. No, that also... This is so much harder to get my head around. I don't know how to sh how do I shoot my bananas? Oh, it's the left one. Kim and I went to the arcade for Valentine's Day and we played the Mario Kart arcade and that's what this feels like. No! <laughs> it's so much more fun with the steering wheel. Like really. None of this none of this Wii steering wheel crap that didn't really work. Oh, come on. That red shell was right on me. The only thing I need to figure out is how to stabilize these pedals. I didn't think about it. But the more my excited little feet push at them, the further back they're getting pushed under the table. But I've gotten a lot better at, uh, at steering in general. In fact, if I can pull out a little magic here, I might even be able to come first. Oh, uh, no, but I'll settle for second. That isn't bad for my first time with the wheel. Again, everything about it feels really quality. This isn't really the table for it, but... It's great. I can't remember how much it was. I think it was like a hundred or something, but I love it. And it's kind of made me want to play Mario Kart again. So yes, I love this. It's my number one for the entire video. Cool. You know, it's been a really fun video when at the end of the video, my table looks like this. Uh, again, links to everything below. I know it's a huge mess, but I hope you had fun in this video. I know I did. If you like this video, please show it some support because these are, they're fun to make, but they're difficult to make and they're expensive to make. So again, thanks to the sponsor, links down below. Show your support by either checking them out or liking the video or hey, flipping on the subscribe button and getting us that much closer to a million. Oh, I never opened the last thing of Pokemon cards. Score Bunny, Pikachu, uh, ooh, Metal Saucer. Cause I mean, who doesn't want a Metal Saucer? Well, um, that's a waste of money.
Oh, did I do it? Just by holding it down longer? Oh, I'm so dumb. Oh my gosh.